Um, I'm calling the 530 general meeting of the Palm Springs Planning Commission to order. Can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Irvin? Present. Commissioner Hirschbein? Present. Commissioner Roberts? No. Present. Commissioner Song? Present. Vice Chair Marusi? Here. And Chair Wormack? Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. Um, can we have a report in the posting of the agenda, please? Yes, Madam Chair. The agenda was posted on Thursday, May 20th. Our meeting has been published in accordance with state law. Uh, can we have an acceptance of the agenda? Can I have a motion to accept Commissioner Hirschbein? Uh, I'd like to make a change to the agenda by placing item 4A on the consent calendar. I'll second that. Uh, are th is there any opposition? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the next item is public comments. This time has been set aside for members of the public to address the Planning Commission on consent okay. calendar and other agenda items and items of general interest within the subject matter jurisdiction of the commission. Please note that the Planning Commission is prohibited from taking action on items not listed on the posted agenda. Three minutes is allowed for each speaker. Testimony for public hearings may be offered at this time. Members of the public who would like to testify on 1, 1A, 4A, 4B, and 4C are directed to comment here. Are there members of the public, uh, David, Mr. Newell, are there members of the public who wish to testify? Madam Chair, we have received a number of uh, comments on item 4C, which is the Canyon View Courts. So I believe there are some members of the public who would like to speak on this item. So for those who are participating uh, here via Zoom, uh, you can uh, unmute your microphone. And uh, the first person who I've received a message from to speak is Jane Garrison. Anyone else wishing to speak, uh, please message me or uh, provide us notice in the chat or raise or click the raise hand um, button. Ms. Garrison. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Planning Commission. It's nice to see you. I was uh, thinking about this today. This is the first time I'm speaking before the Planning Commission and since the golf course conversion ordinance. So it's been a while. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of Oswald Land Trust, which you all are familiar with. And uh, I want to point out that it is the first time that I'm speaking on something in so long because I want the public to understand we are not an anti-development organization. We are a land conservation land trust. Uh, but this, this project is a little different because this involves the critically endangered Casey's June beetle. And I'm hoping by now everyone had a chance to read our letter. But in general, what we're asking for is we're asking for the perimeter around the neighborhood to be left in a natural state. Um, what we're asking for is reasonable. It doesn't change the number of homes, the square footage, the streets, the layout of the neighborhood. We want to work with the city on this. We want to work with the developer on this. I think this is a great pilot project to show that we can all work together on something. Um, as you all know, the US Fish and Wildlife Service would have loved to avoid the wash, any destruction to the wash uh, in the perimeter of this project, because that, only, that not only affects the Casey's June beetle, but it also affects the critical habitat. Now, before line 41 was going in, that was not feasible because the basins that needed to go underground but, and that is why there was a mitigated negative declaration. But now that line 41 is, uh, is in or is going in, that is considered a substantial change. And that makes what was once not feasible is now feasible. And that is the ability to limit the impact to the critically endangered Casey's June beetle. And if we don't look at something that limits what can be done now that couldn't be done before, 
that situation could trigger a full EIR, a full survey of Casey's June Beetle, and it would tie this project up for years, which none of us want. Um, clearly, there's housing that's needed in Palm Springs. Um, this clearly can go forward with some adjustments to the wash. And um, we, we want to work with the Planning Commission on this. We have a very robust relationship with um, University of California, Riverside. We work with their engineers. We work with their ecologists, biologists, master gardeners. They're naturalists. We can work together to save that little ecosystem that works that runs the parameter the perimeter of Palm Canyon and down Matthew Drive and we would even work with um, with the developer on beautiful signage that educates the public about why this wash was was saved why this wash was kept natural um, and we would do anything we can to see that that can happen and uh, we hope that um, everybody involved will be as reasonable to see that just because something is legal doesn't mean that it's necessarily ethical. If there's another way that we can approach this and there's now a way to do it, I really hope we can look at it. Thank you, Ms. Carson. Is there a number, enough, David, is there another member of the public? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, the next person on the list here is Bettina Rosmarino. Hi, thank you, good evening. Uh, yes, my name is Bettina Rose Marino, and I'm the board on the board of Oswald Land Trust, and also the founder of Palm Springs Wildlife Advocates. And we, as Jane mentioned, we have grave concerns about the habitat destruction and bulldozing of wildlife for this particular project. Uh, there is a re rich ecosystem that runs along East Palm Canyon Drive and up from East Palm Canyon Drive along Matthew Drive. And in having spoken with the representative for this project, David Hardy, he informed us that there will be heavy excava excavation along East Palm Canyon Drive, as well as permanent removal of habitat along Matthew Drive. Currently living in these perimeter locations are many species of birds, cottontail rabbits, the critically endangered Casey Tumbido that Jane spoke of, and the Coachella Valley round-tailed brown squirrels. The last two species, the beetle and the ground squirrels are found only in Coachella Valley. While the Casey's June beetle is a federally listed endangered species, the Coachella Valley round tail ground squirrels are also a species of special concern and he have even been a candidate for federal listing under the ESA. The work for this project, as it is currently planned, would wipe out all of these, uh, that would wipe out these two species along with all of the other animals who are there and wildlife. However, there appears to be a real opportunity for the developer to preserve habitat here. The ecosystems are along the perimeters, which is actually pretty fortunate. The developer could implement plan changes that would not excavate the existing wash along East Palm Canyon Drive and could have a larger setback on Matthew Drive particularly, uh, as that the motor court and the sculpture park encroach upon the habitat that is existing there. Um, so then there could actually be a native ecosystem integration. Home buyers and the community would love to see habitat preservation and wildlife protection within their very own backyard. In speaking with Canyon View LLC's representative, David Hardy, we expressed that perhaps there is a unique opportunity to work together to determine how to en enact a small wildlife refuge within the confines of the Can Canyon View Courts community. Mr. Hardy assured us that he would discuss more in-depthly with his engineers to determine if there was a way to avoid a full excavation along East Palm Canyon Drive. I also ask that he revisit with the designers a way to incorporate the sculpture park with existing vegetation and retain the entire tree line on Matthew Drive so as to avoid that habitat destruction. As I mentioned, this is a unique opportunity to provide preservation in a cost-effective and unobtrusive way to to this project, whereas wholesale bulldozing under colonies of ground squirrels when they are in free fall and population numbers is not something that this community can get behind. We have an extremely vociferous community of wildlife enthusiasts in Palm Springs, which is a wonderful thing. And every member of the desert ecosystem is important from the beetle to the ground squirrel to the coyote to the bobcat. 
Thank you for your time and please consider delaying this final approval as we would like more time to have a more in-depth discussion with the developer. Thank you, uh, Ms. Rosmarino. The next person we have uh, to speak is Sophia Somers. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for hosting this meeting. Uh, pretty much just wanted to echo Jane Garrison's and Bet Bettina Rosmarino's um, sentiments there. Um, I am a full-time resident uh, across the street from this development in Waverly Condos. And I was actually just checking out the parcel for development um, earlier this afternoon. Um, there I was able to take photos of, you know, road runners. Um, my father and I were checking it out a couple of days ago, saw a falcon eating a squirrel carcass. It was kind of neat. Um, but, you know, it's just living proof of the wildlife that is perpetually present in that area. And uh, my background is in environmental science, energy and earth resources. and I'm just a huge proponent of keeping things natural when you can. Um, there's also like a ton of microorganisms that go beneath the surface that you would be disrupting by, you know, um, pulling up that area. It just, it seems like a very plausible space to keep natural. And I really like what Jane said, you know, have the signage there for the community so that way they can see it. Um, from my experience with like ecotourism, when people can understand what is going on, it touches their lives in a different way that gets them more involved and more active within their communities to protect even something so small and minute as a Casey's June beetle. Um, so that was pretty much all I wanted to say. I am a proponent for keeping it natural uh, if you can. Um, I think that that's the right way to go. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Summers. Uh, next, we have Kate, Ms. Kelly. Yes, hello, everybody. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm a full-time resident as well, and I live close to this area. Um, I regularly walk along um, uh, the paths out there. Um, there's quite a few mature trees and large shrubs, which do um, facilitate uh, many much wildlife, which I enjoy seeing. Um, and when I looked at the proposal, uh, and then Patina mentioned something about the perimeter, um, it would be really disappointing to destruct this wildlife and um, I really uh, impress upon you to uh, leave the perimeter at a min minimum, um, keep that for the wildlife, leave it untouched and let, let it be natural as it is. Um, thank you very much. Appreciate your time for listening. Uh, thank you. Uh, next we have uh, Patrice Windham Smith. Patrice, you're muted. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, good evening. Um, I am the owner, along with my husband, of the property located at 850 North Palm Canyon Drive. Um, we are desirous of um, putting and installing a uh, gate for the purpose of securing the opening um, to our parking lot. Uh, we purchased the property in 2019. Uh, from Benyon Devell, who had been there for 22 years. When we purchased it, there was an existing roll-up, roll-down motorized gate that was non-functioning. Uh, we removed the gate uh, and we've submitted plans to put in a new gate. Uh, the new gate is completely manually operated. There's no motorization. Um, the plan is to open it manually in the morning um, and close it uh, in the evening at the end of the workday um, for the purpose of securing the parking lot. Um, we believe that that really is the only way that we can mitigate um, potential issues. Uh, I myself have been on the property a number of times and have you know, found you know, trash, 
uh, other assorted things. Um, the rear entrance to the property is not visible from the street, so I am a little concerned about people wandering on the property at all hours of the night and being able to access the property um, at the rear of, of the building, not to mention the potential for trash, people parking there without permission, um, you know, human waste, garbage, et cetera. Um, we do, you know, we did our due diligence. We do have security cameras and we do have an alarm system, but those things um, will let me know if somebody's on the property, but they don't stop anyone from going on the property. So people without a gate are free to access the parking lot at any hour of, of the night. Um, I do own um, other commercial property, um, principally in Pasadena. And I will tell you um, that prior to putting gates in my other properties, um, we arrived very frequently to find um, cars, trash, needles, human feces, urine, um, you know, evidence of people sleeping there. Uh, that wasn't once, that was many times. Um, and with all due respect, I'm, you know, I have nothing but respect for the police department, but I did call the Pasadena police and their comment to me was, well, unfortunately, unless we catch them in the act of vandalizing your property, there's nothing we can do. Um, I live two hours away and my goal in buying the building, I bought it because it's an iconic building. I love Palm Springs and I hope to, you know, make it even more beautiful um, and keep it beautiful. So the purpose of this is is security. Um, let me assure you that nothing is gonna change about the parking lot. In other words, we're, the, the, there's a covered parking stalls. People will enter the parking lot the same as they always have. They will park the way they always have. When they leave, they will leave the same way. Um, there's no need for a turnaround because nothing about the parking lot's going to change and the gates will manually stay open during the day. So um, this is purely for, you know, security uh, so that I know that the property is secure at all times uh, of the day and night. Um, okay. And I really appreciate you taking your time to listen to what we have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I haven't had, I have one other person who will be speaking during a public hearing, but um, if there's anyone else who is on the Zoom meeting at this time that wishes to speak that was not able to provide a comment uh, or message in the message or the chat, uh, please turn on your microphone and provide your testimony. It doesn't appear that we have any additional speakers, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. The public hearing is closed. Uh, moving or moving to the consent calendar. We have two items on the consent calendar. Item 1A, approval of the minutes of January 13th, 2021 and January 27th of 2021. <clears throat> and the second item, which was formally 4A is Patricia and uh, David and Patricia Murano owners for a major architectural application and an administrative minor modification proposing a 7,120 foot square foot single family residence that exceeds the height limits for the zone and accessory structures on a hillside lot located at 1405 Rose Avenue. Can I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, before you call the vote, I need to recuse on the minutes because I was part of that meeting. Thank you. Is there anyone else that needs to recuse on the minutes? Um, there being none, can I have a motion on the consent calendar? I'll make the motion. And do we have a second? Commissioner Hirschbein is a second. Uh, could you call the roll, please? Vice Chair Maruzzi? Yes. Commissioner Hirschbein? Yes. Chair Wormick? Yes. Commissioner Song? Yes. Commissioner Roberts? 
Yes. And Commissioner Urban. Yes. Thank you. That motion passes unanimously. The next item is public hearing. The first is the City of Palm Springs to amend the downtown specific plan uh, document to revise the architectural review process. Uh, can the city is the applicant? Can I have a staff report, please? Madam Chair and members of the Planning Commission, as you're aware, we've recently made changes to our architectural review process. As part of that, staff was directed to go into the specific plan documents, namely the Desert Palisades specific plan, the Downtown Palm Springs specific plan, and the Section 14 specific plan to revise the architectural review process in each of those documents to match the city's process, newly adopted process. With that, I'd like to talk specifically about the changes to the downtown Palm Springs uh, specific plan and what we are proposing to do relative to the uh, architectural review process. I'll just start sharing my screen here, just a moment. So in terms of the current process that we have for architectural review in the downtown Palm Springs specific plan, uh, the process begins with step one, which is the formal submittal of the application Step two is review of the application by the Architectural Review Committee. Step three is Planning Commission review of the Architectural Review application. And then specific to this plan, it requires City Council approval. Uh, and so step four is the actual City Council approval of the project. Based on your discussion back in the month of March relative to changes to the architectural review process, what you all had suggested was that we revise the process to begin with a study session. So as you look at the bottom part of the screen, this is how we would revise the process. Step one would be the pre-submittal conference with staff where staff would review the application uh, and review it for conformance to not only development standards, but architectural standards that are specific to the specific plan. Step two would be unique in that we would then have a study session. Uh, as I understood your direction, that would be with the Planning Commission and the Architectural Review Committee jointly. Um, after the study session where only input would be taken on the design, the applicant would then formalize their applications, both the Architectural Review and the new Development Permit applications, and submit those to staff. Continuing on with the process, step four would be planning commission review on the development permit application. Step five would be city council action on the development permit application. So they'd review the recommendation of the planning commission and then take final action on the development permit. And then the final step would be actual architectural review by the architectural review committee. So once Planning Commission and City Council have finalized the development permit application, the Architectural Review Committee would then look at the architectural details and materials and uh, approve the architectural review application. So that is the proposed process. I have reviewed these changes with the major property owner whose properties are within the boundaries of the specific plan. They noted that they have no objections to the changes as proposed. With that, Madam Chair, that concludes my staff report and I'd be happy to take your questions and comments. Also, this is a public hearing, so we do need to open it up to the public. Is before I have questions of staff, as you are both staff and the applicant, I'd like to open it up to the uh, public hearing and then go back to take uh, questions and comments from the commission. Uh, Mr. Newell, are there members of the public who'd like to speak? Madam Chair, we have not had any requests to speak, but if there's anyone on the meeting this evening that wishes to speak, please unmute your microphone. There being no one who's indicated they would like to speak, the public hearing is now closed. 
and I will take questions of staff if there are any. If there aren't, I would like to take motions. Commissioner Hirschbein. Could you put up that review process uh, uh, slide again, please? Okay, assuming this is adopted, uh, uh, after city council approves it, does the architectural review committee have any um, uh, authority to deny the project? They could deny the architectural review application if it doesn't meet the city's criteria for approval they would not be able to deny the previously approved development permit application that the Planning Commission and City Council have approved. Could, could you elaborate on that? Because that leaves me a little un, uh, confused about what, what they're able to review and deny and what they're not able to review and deny. Okay, so the difference between the two applications, the development permit application is really under the purview of the Planning Commission. And there's a set of criteria that you may recall from our discussions earlier when we went through the process on that ordinance, where you are reviewing compliance with development standards, you're reviewing massing, you're reviewing building placement, uh, et cetera. So that is the purview of the Planning Commission. And once you approve a development permit application, uh, the Architectural Review Committee will then review the architectural details of the project. Uh, so they are restricted to looking at things such as materials, colors, lighting, um, landscape materials, things of that nature. Uh, there are separate criteria that apply to the architectural review process. Um, so once the Planning Commission has approved a development permit application, uh, the Architectural Review Committee is restricted to reviewing and approving architectural details only. And will the development permit application include those details that the AAC would be reviewing? Correct. Per your direction, what we will do is forward to the Planning Commission a copy of the development permit application and the architectural review application so that you have the ability to see the same materials that the architectural review committee will look at later. In addition, as we've talked about, while you won't be approving the architectural review application, you can forward comments to the architectural review committee in terms of items that you'd like them to review or look at. So for example, as you see colors that you might like the architectural review committee uh, to take a, a more detailed look at the proposed colors of a project. Uh, so that's one way that you will interact with the Architectural Review Committee. I'm just gonna pull a, an I, example out of the air. Uh, it's, a, it's a concern I've seen AAC uh, discuss on a lot of projects. It has to do with shading. And uh, if, if the Planning Commission uh, is, is generally an agreement about the massing and so forth, would, would, would AAC be able to um, enforce comments about shading? To a certain degree in that it doesn't modify the development permit uh, approval. Um, so they wouldn't be able to significantly modify the massing of the building, for example. But if they did want to add, for example, a shade over a window or things like that, that would be permissible under the architectural review application. What about window placement? Window placement uh, generally would be the purview of the architectural review committee. Um, although the planning commission, you'll be looking at the elevations of the building. If you have comments about the fenestration, uh, you can certainly pass those on to the architectural review committee. Well, I was just thinking of it specifically in terms of shading and, and sun penetration, those kind of things. So that so would be yeah, a, you, would, you would pass those the AAC? On to ARC. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions, Commissioner Roberts? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, when, do you mind putting that 
document back up on the screen, the comparison. Thank you so much. So I'm a little bit confused by what we are achieving here. Could step two not pretty much handle step four and step six? In other words, I, the, the joint study session could be a final action session if we're already together and talking about it, rather than sending it through a double process after that, meaning again through the Planning Commission and again through the Architectural Review. My understanding of Council's desire in this was to streamline the process. And I'm afraid that what we've done here is added to it, um, but perhaps I'm missing something. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree that you're adding to the process. One of the concerns that we had on a recent application that came through the process is that the building was completely designed and when it went through Architectural Advisory Committee and then Planning Commission, um, there were concerns in terms of, of the design approach. And so as we discussed revisions to the architectural review process, what was suggested at the planning commission meeting is that perhaps having a study session before the applicant submits their formal application could address some of the design concerns up front so that by the time you get to steps four, five, and six, the planning commission and architectural review committee have already seen it and hopefully that will make that portion of the process smoother. So it was a way to get some input on the initial design before the applicant finalizes their application submittal to speed up the, the back half of the process, if you will. Um, if you all feel that this might be too cumbersome, I'm more than happy to take your suggestions and uh, we have the ability to continue this hearing and, and maybe come back and, and look at some alternatives. Uh, one more question, Glenn. The pre-submittal conference with staff, isn't that something that generally takes place anyway or only when an applicant requests it? Right now, it only happens when an applicant requests it. Uh, one of the things that we have proposed to do as part of the revisions to the architectural review process is to make that a formal process for all of our major development permit and major architectural review applications so that way we can better prepare applicants to go through the process um, and hopefully be able to shorten the process by doing more work up front with them. Thank you, Flynn, that's helpful. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Well, uh, we're still on questions of staff, correct? You can be questions of staff or also comments. Uh, Commissioner Maruzzi. Uh, thank you. Regarding, you know what, Flynn, we're going to need that chart back up. Might as well keep it up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Steps one and two are, are very important for the reason that you gave. The, the example, and I'm just going to say it was when the Virgin Replacement Project came forward. The work by the architects had gone to the point where the concerns that many of us raised wouldn't be addressed unless they had completely redesigned the building, redesigned it almost completely in terms of its overall massing and it's just the whole thing. And so step two is really, well, step one uh, with the, um, the new uh, planner who will have a background in um, design and be able to provide some comments to the applicant that the city is focused on architecture and that a, a I wouldn't call it a, an average design, but a, a design that isn't um, superior wouldn't really be appropriate for our town. So that hopefully could be part of step one. If not, step two, uh, the Planning Commission and the Architectural Review Committee could make that um, very plain. So that gives plenty of time, hopefully, for the a uh, developer to work with the architect or maybe hire a different firm uh, that will be able to provide a, a better, ultimately a better design. 
So that was the reason why step one and step two were so important and hopefully would address the issues that we um, experienced very recently. For other comments, Commissioner Song? Um, two questions. Um, in this process also, uh, do we look back a year from now or a year from when this uh, was adopted to see how the process have, has gone? And uh, the second question is for the joint study session, um, what would be a quorum, meaning how many planning commissioners and how many architectural uh, commissioner members? Certainly, in terms of the ordinance itself and reviewing the effectiveness of the ordinance, uh, what we plan to do is in 12 months after administering the process, come back to the planning commission and city council uh, and advise you how it's worked and also look at any tweaks that we might need to do uh, to improve the ordinance. Uh, as I've explained in the past, you never get a brand new ordinance correct right out of the box. Uh, there typically are little adjustments that you need to make. And I think it's important that we come back to you in 12 months uh, to, to see how it's been. Secondly, in terms of what constitutes a quorum for the study session, we would need to have a majority of the members of both the Planning Commission and the Architectural Review Committee in order to conduct the study session. Both of you have seven member boards, so we would need a minimum of four members of each body in order to conduct the study session. Commissioner Roberts. And if, I can't see Commissioner Irvin, so if you want to, speak please speak up has the city council seen this proposal this proposed change no they haven't yet uh, the planning commission needs to make a recommendation first before it goes forward to the city council okay i i, I will just take this moment to comment i have concerns about this. I, I think we're making the process far more cumbersome. I, I think I understand the intent, and that makes sense to me. I'm just wondering if we can't streamline this process somewhat. It's, it's making a lot more work for staff, for the boards, and ultimately putting the applicant through um, a very extended process. And I'm, I, I just don't know that we can't do better than this. Although, unfortunately, sitting here right now, seeing it for the first time, I, I can't make a recommendation for that. I'd like to speak to Commissioner what Commissioner Robert said. Right now, our process is the city, um, city council has approved step one, step three, step four, step five, and step six. The only step in this that the city council has not approved is specific to the downtown specific plan, which is the joint study session. And planning commission has typically held a study session uh, for major projects in the downtown. So it, it isn't out of um, the range of what we've done before in terms of having a study session. And even with the last project, which was difficult, the applicant really appreciated the study session, uh, even though we had it after two meetings of the architectural review committee uh, and before the planning commission met on the project. So I, I think we should go ahead with this. Um, it is good, I think, to hear what the architect in situations, I, I think we either have it with a planning commission uh, study session or a joint study session. But in the past, in the last project, what really happened was the architectural review committee had an entirely different view of the massing of the project than the applicant had and turned them down twice. Then we had a study session and then planning commission dealt with it and turned down a portion of the project based on at least our reading of the um, specific plan. 
and consul approved it. But what happened was with both bodies turning that application down, there was no re there was no resulting review of materials. And so the project went through without anybody reviewing uh, what what is in the purview of the Architectural Review Committee, which is uh, materials, fenestration, and those kinds of items. So I don't think this is more complicated than what we've had in the past. And hopefully it will alert the Planning Commission to concerns that the Architectural Review Committee might have regarding the site and the architecture early on. What was really unfortunate was the applicant going through two reviews uh, with AAC where they turned the project down twice before it got to us for a study session. So I, I would like to try this for a year. Uh, and the only change that I would look at is either including architectural review in the study, in the joint session or having, but we're, I think in every, every instance, we will want a study session on the project to make sure that what the applicant is looking at doing is something that we think the city will want. Before Kathy. we go through full design. So Kathy. I'm gonna put that, hold on. I'm gonna put that out as a motion. I don't know if I'll get a second on it, uh, but maybe people can respond to it as a motion. Commissioner Hirschbein. <clears throat> For clarification, and I'm trying to recollect, isn't there only one parcel left in the specific plan? No, um, there are three parcels on the west side of Palm Canyon, and then there are parcels on the east side of Palm Canyon. Oh, right. Okay, got it. Sorry. Um, okay, so going back to the slide, Lynn, I'm sorry. The 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 joint uh study session is the outcome meant to be different than it is now when we say study session because now when we say study session we're like specifically cautioned about saying i would vote for this or i wouldn't vote for that um and then we don't really have any kind of we, we there's no motion to approve or motion to move forward we just kind of talk and then it's over is is that the intent of this joint study session or is there something more formalized at the end before we move it on to the formal submittal and then the planning commission action? You would be restricted to the same procedures that we have currently for study sessions. So you're not voting on the item, nor are you saying how you would vote on the item. However, you are critiquing the design. Thank you. Uh, I, I I agree with uh, the chair. I, I, I'm willing to give it a try. We have a year. I don't know how many projects are going to come before us in a year in this small amount of, you know, parcels, but um, I, I'm willing to give it a try. Is that a second? Yeah, I'll uh, second it. I have a question before you guys uh, put the motion. I haven't had to make a comment or ask the question yet. So um, I, I would like to know, um, for Flynn, when are we um, going to have these uh, study sessions? Are they going to take place before the Planning Commission meeting, or will they be on another day? We haven't determined that as of yet. What we would probably do is hold them much like we do with the Planning Commission study sessions currently. Uh, we would do it before the regular meeting. However, if that poses to be a problem for some of our planning commission members or architecture review committee members, we could hold it on a separate night, um, whatever works best for your schedule. So we're more than uh, amenable to looking at your schedules and looking at wor what works best for you. Okay, and, and then um, like they were saying before, is there many um, items that will come that will require us to uh, have this study session? Um, and four. No, as has already been indicated, there are not that many parcels left within this specific plan area. Uh, and I don't imagine that you're going to have multiple projects coming through at a time. Uh, as you look at what has been developed thus far, uh, they tend to come in piecemeal one at a time. Um, and so again, I don't think you're going to see very many projects come through. 
So I wouldn't anticipate having more than one or two study sessions in a calendar year. Okay. And, and um, Flynn, with, with your um, work that you've done and, and the work that you've done on this, um, do you see this um, improving or reaching any of the, the goals that have been set um, for us by the city council? Do you see that this process will reach and, and be quickly uh, not drawn out like the other uh, process that we had? Do you see that, do you think that this is, this reach, does that? Yes, I do. And the reason I say that is we're putting more time up front with the applicant before they submit their formal application with the hope that by getting comments from Planning Commission and the Architectural Review Committee in the study session, that we'll be able to get through steps four, five, and six more quickly. As we've witnessed with the last project from the specific plan area that went through the process, it required two meetings of the Architectural Advisory Committee. It required two meetings of the Planning Commission plus a study session, if I'm correct, uh, and then a meeting of the City Council. So as the process currently stands, it has taken a while to get projects through the process. And by doing the work up front, we're hoping that the Planning Commission action, City Council action, and Architectural Review Committee action can be much more quick. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Roberts. Um, thank you. Um, I'm still struggling with this. I, I certainly understand the desire for the joint study session. That makes a lot of sense to me to help mold the project um, so that it, it goes through uh, the rest of the process in a smoother, um, maybe, and maybe even faster um, way. But my concern is that once the Planning Commission has then acted and the City Council has acted, I don't know that the Architectural Review Committee is going to feel as if what they do in that final action is going to make much of a difference. And uh, again, I, I wasn't clear, are they able to send the project back at that point if they want to? No, they wouldn't be able to send the project back. However, if they have concerns about whether or not the project conforms to our review criteria, uh, they can have the applicant make revisions to the architectural details. Um, so it's possible that yes, it could take two meetings of the Architectural Review Committee to finalize the architectural review application, uh, but no, they wouldn't send it back to the Planning Commission or the City Council. It would only be in the case if the Architectural Review Committee denies the Architectural Review application that the applicant could then appeal that application to the Planning Commission. Okay. Madam Chair. Uh, yes, so we have a motion and a second. Um, well, I wanted to make a comment. Please. Because we're dealing with the downtown specific plan and there are so few parcels left, this is not an onerous process um, for something that important. Projects are gonna be coming forward in that area are critical to the, um, the downtown. And I think this is appropriate. Commissioner Roberts had a good point about the step six, but now that since it's reviewed, uh, if it's rejected and goes to the planning commission, I'm assuming then we can make a decision. Now the question is if we deny it, then I guess it goes to the city council. So it's a little more complicated, but um, this is the downtown specific plan. And, and I think this is worth giving it a try. Flynn, we at that point, we would be doing an appeal. So we would be not approving or denying what they did, we would be making a decision, am I correct? That is correct. It that would you would be taking action on the architectural review application to either approve or deny it. So it would end there and it would end with the body that, that approves the development permit application. Correct.
So are there any other comments before uh, we take a vote? If you'd call the roll, please. Mr. Romick? Yes. Commissioner Hirschbein? Yes. Vice Chair Maruzzi? Yes. Commissioner Song? Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. And Commissioner Urban? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. The next item before us is SMS Architects on behalf of Hall Palm Springs 2 to amend the final development plans for the Palm Springs Hotel, formerly known as the Andaz Hotel, to remove the spa located on the second level and, it re and replace it with 14 additional guest rooms, uh, doesn't say which floors, for a total of 164 uh, rooms located at 414 North Palm Canyon Drive. Can we have a staff report, please? Is there staff present that worked on this? Edward, uh, we can't hear your microphone. Hi, my name is Lynn Smith. Um, I, I just was not in very clear with um, who you wanted to speak. Uh, uh, is Smith, it more? No, right now we're not taking public testimony. So at this okay. time we're doing a staff report. So we're just trying to work through a technical difficulty at the moment. Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> Madam Chair, we might take a five minute break in order to uh, address the issue. Thank you. We'll reconvene at uh, 636.
Yeah, thank you, Chair Wormick and members of the Planning Commission. My apology for the little hiccup. So on October 4, 2006, the City Council adopted an MND and approved this uh, mixed-use development. However, since that time, there were a series of delays and amendments to the project. And finally, in 2016, the construction started. However, after uh, a few years, the construction activity stalled and uh, there has been a new ownership who is requesting for this uh, PD amendment. So if I can just share my screen, Madam Chair. Good second. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so the, the proposed amendment is uh, simply to eliminate this part that was located on the second floor of the, uh, of the hotel. And uh, in, in place of that, they will be adding 14 additional rooms for a total of 164. So previously there is 150 room hotel and spa restaurants and retail spaces. With the addition of 14 additional rooms, it will bring the total to 164. This uh, minor revision will take place what will be seen on the south and east um, sections of the elevations. And with this amendment, there will be no uh, changes to any of the development standards, such as heights and, and the setbacks. All those have been established when the uh, previous final PD was approved. So this, um, this area shows uh, the vicinity or, or the state of the, the, the development itself. This is that's what you see here. It is specifically located at the 414 North, uh, North Palm Canyon Drive. And it is bounded uh, to the north by Alejo and uh, to the west by um, North Palm Canyon and to the east by uh, East Palm Canyon Drive. This area here is where uh, the building uh, is located, which is designated as building E. That's where the revision will be taking place. So this shows the floor plan of that, uh, that specific floor. So it's in this area here that will be impacted by this change. And because uh, of the addition of rooms, it will, it will, um, it will necessitate uh, minor revisions to the elevations, which will be slightly different than what is currently is, that ch those changes in the elevation will affect these two sections right here, and then to the south of it too. So this is the third floor. And here, this, this shows the, um, the two versions. This is the previously approved uh, floor plan, on that area, it has a fitness center, has a lobby, the spa, and additional workout um, spaces, and that will be replaced by these um, um, by these modules containing the 14 rooms. The um, the swimming pool and all the certain areas will remain. But these pictures just show the, the current uh, state of conditions. These pictures we are taking just. Yesterday, as a matter of fact, this is how it looks uh, today. And um, this is the area in particular that will be impacted by the amendment. The same from another vantage here and on the two lower pictures as well. And so these, these are the elevations. So this is the current um, or the previously approved elevations. The final plan development was approved way back in uh, 2015. Actually, that was another amendment that was made to the project. And with the revisions, this is what it's going to look like. Uh, you see the, um, the space that you saw earlier that was uh, empty will be filled with rooms. And the front elevations will have glass materials that will almost mimic what you have on the west side of the elevations. And as I mentioned earlier, this will not impact any of the development standard that was previously established such as the height itself, it will still be within uh, the height that was uh, previously um, approved. 
And now th this is uh, the full elevation looking at the panoramic view of the elevation. So this will be on the south side of it, and this will be on the east side. This is the portion that is in question right here that will be, in, that will be impacted. And this is on the north, on the Alejo side of the elevation. And this is the west side facing, uh, facing North Palm Canyon and where the, end, the main entrance of the uh, development is located. Now, anytime there is an amendment to a development of this size, we go back to um, analyze the parking um, provided to see uh, if, we, if we have an intensified use, and if so, how would it impact parking? Originally, when this project was approved, it had, it had um, and with, the, uh, with the amendment, there will still be um, adequ adequate parking and, and, in fact, excess parking. As you can see on this table here, the total that would have been required under our code would be 206, including uh, seven handicaps. Uh, total provided will be 280, including 11 handicaps. And so parking will not be, the parking needs will not be exacerbated as a result of the amendment. Uh, that will basically conclude um, staff uh, report. This item has been scheduled to go before the city council on June the 10th. I'm not saying this to put any pressure, but it is uh, being, um, being published should be reviewed by the uh, city council on June 10th. The reason is that the amendment is not, a mi it's not minor in nature as described by the code. It is major, therefore it, it requires a review by both planning commission and commission and the city. So staff recommendation will be for the planning commission to approve and recommend approval uh, to the city council. It is a public hearing, um, the applicant is here he would like to make a presentation to the planning commission. And if there is any questions, staff is available to answer those questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, do, do members of the commission have questions of staff on this item? And I do. I, I can't see your hands, Commissioner Hirschbein. Uh, has the AAC seen this revision? No, so the way we intend to uh, the review process will go is that after uh, the city council review, we'll go back to the AAC. And if we prefer the AAC to see it first, can we do that? I will let the director of development services chip in on that. Technically for this type of amendment, it doesn't require the AAC to review it. Um, what I would recommend is that if there are aspects of the project that you would like the AAC to review and approve, you can condition that as part of your consideration here today. But we're not allowed to ask them to look at it first? Uh, no, that's something that you would do uh, as a condition of your recommendation. Okay. Are there other questions of staff? Commissioner Roberts. Thank you, Madam Chair. Coming back to the parking, um, it was my understanding when this was approved originally that this development was to offer additional parking for city use. Can you speak to that, Mr. Robertson? Yes, that's correct. That uh, the There was an agreement between the city and, and the developer at the time and if I'm not mistaken, though, the, the section of the parking that will be available to the, to the public will be on the very ground floor, um, going in through the Aleo um, access into the property. However, if my memory serves me well, I, I thought at one point that um, agreement was no longer uh, in place. I'll provide some additional information on that, if I might, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Robertson is correct that the city was offering um, fees to the applicant to provide public parking uh, in the garage at the northeast corner of the property. 
However, I believe the current owner of the property does not uh, want to accept the city payment or has not accepted the city payment. So consequently, they aren't required to provide that as public parking. However, please note that they do have parking in excess of what is required by code, even with the addition of uh, additional hotel units. Um, so there is excess parking uh, above and beyond what would be required by code. Oh, thank you, Fun. Are there other questions? I, I have one. I couldn't understand the drawings in terms of the impact uh, on specifically Indian Canyon. It doesn't look to me like on the third and fourth floors, it has the same footprint as the original spa had, but it looks like the footprint is wider uh, than it originally was. Can you explain that? And how far is it set back from Indian Canyon? And is it, I, I do remember when we approved this, we were concerned about the fortress effect and the impact on Indian Canyon if it was too tall and widening it appears to do some of this. Is it wider? And what is the impact? And yeah, how so you, you do the drops, you could point them out again. Yeah. So we'll go back to share. Can you enlarge that? Yeah, let me see if I can. Oh, I'm trying to see if I can. Edward, can you do the display setting switch screen? Okay. It's still showing the framed windows. Oh, really? Okay, let me swap it again. What about now? David? It's still showing the framed windows. Okay. Maybe uh, end the slideshow and reopen it. Yeah, I did. Okay, but anyway, let me see. If I'm buying glass. Possibly you could start with answering my question. Yeah, so I did discuss the massing with the architect who was going to speak to it, but uh, in short, it is going to create some, um, the view is not going to be as open as it was without the addition of the new rooms. So the, I'm going to leave that to the architect. As far as the setback is concerned, the setback remains, it's not going to encroach beyond the footprints of the second level here, of the base here. So the setbacks uh, will be maintained. It's, it's, they are not encroaching past uh, the area that was previously approved. But so I will leave not the third and fourth floors? Yes. Okay, but the massing is different. It's different, correct. Okay, that's, uh, those are Can my I questions. Can I point you to a drawing that shows that? It's in the in our package. Yeah, there it is. Uh, no, that's not it. Sorry. The pages aren't numbered, but it's it's the one that has the previously approved March 4, 2015 and proposed revision side by side. It's that sheet. If you look at it, yeah, there you go. No, that's not it. Sorry. Keep going. Keep going. Sorry, yeah. No, it's the plan view. It says previously approved March 4, 2015. No, it's, I believe it's page five. That's well, they're not. Right here. The pages aren't numbered. Yeah. Oh, you're. So no. the it's plan right view, the plan view, Edward. Uh, okay. 
No, that's not it. Okay. Uh, so this one? How, how come I'm looking at a page that has uh, previously approved March 4, 2015, and on the left? Yeah, perhaps I don't right. have that slide. What? It may not be in his slideshow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but it's, it's in our this packet. One? It's in our packet. If you look, Kathy, mm -hmm. the the previously approved one is an L-shaped building with the short end of the L facing uh, Indian. And then if you look at the revised one, it's more of a block. And the block is, is wider. So it's practically the whole area is facing um, Indian. So it's indeed uh, a much more massing towards Indian on the third, what is it? The third and the fourth floor or the second and the third floor? Uh, it's the second it, third floor. Than it was previously. Before it was just a slender piece of the L sticking out towards Indian, which was the length of one room. And now it's the width of four rooms. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions? Would it would it help if we pulled up our presentation? Yeah, if there aren't more questions of staff, I'd like to go to the applicant. And we should open the public hearing, shouldn't we, David? Right. So if we can open the public hearing and have the applicant speak, you have 10 minutes, Mr. Dedman. This is Rob Bernheimer. I Fine. represent the applicant. Fine. Mr. I, I'm just going to briefly uh, give you the background and then turn it over to the, the folks, the technical people that I know you want to speak with. But, you know, this project, um, the Hall Group was the financier of the project and the original developer defaulted. Uh, we took the project back last March. It's been a heck of a process to or eliminate $20 million worth of liens and get to where we are today. We made an extensive presentation to the city council uh, on, on April 22nd and made a commitment to start construction on this by the end of the year. So these are some of the re revisions that we'd like to do to the building. You know, a lot of the building is built. So, you know, kind of the, the cake's already made and we wanna change the icing a little bit because we wanna make some minor revisions. And that's what we have here before you today. So I'll turn it over to Brian Martinelli, who's the Vice President of Development for the Hall Group. So what, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the council. Um, we have uh, uh, taken, a, uh, We lost you, Brian. As we as we wait for Brian, I can. I'm my name is Brandon. I'm the Brandon Dedman architect with SMS Architects for the project. Um, until he comes on, I can chime in a little bit here. Um, oh, Brian's computer just died. He just texted me. So. Um, so I'll, I'll speak a little bit about what Brian and I were planning on kind of presenting and answer some of your questions here too. I've been involved in the project since day one with the original developer for many, many years here. Um, and I understand some of your concerns were some of the original concerns with the massing. Just to, I pulled up on the screen here, the existing or the proposed approved and the original. The existing building actually comes all the way out to this point right here as one story and then it kind of steps back as multiple stories. So this element here is actually the, Basically, we'll say above the podium level, we say it's the three stories above. So basically, the massing that's been added is just basically for these two rooms. And part of that is this balcony here that actually extends out. Um, so it's it sits out about maybe 15 feet for, or 30 feet further than what it does. But we've also pulled it a little bit further away from the property line. As you can see, originally it was about 13 feet. Uh, and we're about the same, but we're kind of stepping it back a little bit too to help um, bring the massing down. We've also designed the elevation to kind of account for the massing also by having instead of the original design had a lot of um, solid walls um, on this elevation, a lot more density because it was really a side of a unit. 
And by turning the units and facing the um, uh, Indian Canyon, we're able to give them views and we're also able to put more glass, which will help lighten the load, uh, continue with the design, uh, kind of the mid-century modern feel that we had for the project that continues to to develop that and have kind of the more the long lineal uh, cantilevered edges that we have on the rest of the project, but kind of elevates this part of the project a little higher level, a little, um, little more enhanced. It's going to be kind of a nicer end of the project. The units are going to be designed a little higher end in the rest of the project too. So it is a little more massing. The top of the roof is the same as the existing top of the roof. The tower is exactly the same too, but it's basically just adding in these four guest rooms here is the change in the massing of that's really the street facing elevation um, and then the side elevation which is along the property line which is um, this view here is, is um, substantially not that different it, it's a little bit closer to the street but it's, um, it's still short of what that first floor deck was coming out to um, so that kind of maybe hopefully answers some of the questions you had for that uh, and i know um, brian was going to bring out some of the points about just trying to um, Actually, I'm not sure if he's back there. You send me that. Yeah, I, I, I okay. apologize. I, 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 uh, Edward, uh, Mr. Robertson's not the only one having technical difficulties tonight, so I, I, I apologize. Um, that said, I just wanted to give a little the basis in terms of how we arrived and where we are. Um, we've obviously, uh, uh, as mentioned during the uh, city council meeting last month, we have uh, uh, begun and are about to finalize negotiations with a very high-end uh, hotel uh, brand. And with that, they've done uh, quite extensive peer reviews related to the existing uh, property as, as, as previously designed. And so uh, we feel that with the additional uh, guest rooms, uh, we meet the, uh, the uh, intent of their, uh, of their program, creating what is more or less a hotel within a, a hotel uh, given the uh, market feedback and market studies performed, we've uh, uh, continued the design and increased efficiency as it relates to some of the back of house space, uh, but also uh, as it relates to just the, the, the level two, which previously uh, housed the spa. But, but really wanted just to point out that, you know, we're excited as it relates to this project uh, uh, as we, for those that may or may not, be aware we did mention uh, to city council uh, last month that we are uh, thoroughly engaged as, as in as part of our deliverables uh, the admitted or the PD's PNZ resubmission uh, was scheduled for April 30th which we had uh, in fact we we've met that date uh, and this is in as it stands we are here today as a result of that but more importantly I know that there's a there's questions as it relates to construction start. We did, we have targeted a October uh, uh, construction start, but uh, frankly, if, if there's areas in which we can go ahead and commence construction sooner, uh, it's in our best interest to do that, knowing that we want uh, to complete, open and complete the hotel uh, prior to uh, next year's season of uh, October of, of 22. So anything that we can do now, uh, obviously, uh, positions ourselves in, uh, uh, in order to achieve that goal. I'll just add one more thing. Uh, addressing Commissioner Roberts' question about the parking agreement. Um, that, that agreement um, was, was, I think, lapsed and is no longer uh, exists between the parties. I think Ms. Mr. Fagg was correct about that. And given the, the new program, um, we're not interested in continuing that agreement, but we are in negotiations um, with the city right now uh, following our meeting on April 22nd with regards to um, a new agreement that would create some, some benchmark timelines for us, as well as uh, some uh, TOT sharing under your ordinance uh, that will be brought forward in, in the future. Okay, if that concludes the applicant presentation, uh, we have had one request to speak, uh, Matt B. Uh, if you can identify your full name and uh, you'll have three minutes to provide your testimony. 
Uh, yes. Um, um, Mr. Robertson, would you would you be kind enough to put up the aerial view? I believe it was your second slide. It would be helpful in, in my comments, if possible. The, the overview of the whole project with the arrows. <clears throat> and please identify your full name. The, the photograph one, I think it's number three there. Thank you. Um, my name is Matt Busquette. I'm the owner of 382 to 398 North Palm Canyon. If you can look at the picture here, it is the building immediately to the south of the project. It kind of has a green awning, if you can see in the picture, if you could maybe point over there for people to see that. It's uh, the building immediately adjacent to the south. Um, I call this the project, the project of 10,000 paper cuts. Uh, for those of you who have been around, I believe the project started not in 2014 or 15 or 16, but 2005. And as each subsequent um, contractor, financer, architect, and owner has come along, um, the plans have morphed and changed and each time asked for something slightly different, slightly more, um, and, and slightly altered. Uh, in one of the key things for us, if you can look at our property, you can see that two thirds of our property is actually vacant land behind the existing building. And our intention is a, a development similar to Birba, but we've been on hold unfortunately for 15 years. And I, I say that again, 15 years as this is sort of unfolded, waiting to do our development. So we're, we're obviously very concerned about the South uh, property line and sort of how all of this involve, evolves and what happens. In particular, there, there are three sets of issues. One, there is an, uh, an alleyway in between the development and our building that was discussed uh, uh, quite a number of times at a variety of city council meetings. And I believe everybody on the city council is now gone. And there were a couple of verbal agreements that never got put into writing and we're anxious to make sure that those don't get lost in the wash. Um, and and I, we don't know exactly how to go about that. The second piece of it is the public parking piece. And we know that since 2005, since the original development, there were a number of things that were granted to the various develop, the, to the developer and the various uh, contractors and architects in exchange beyond just the payment the city was going to make in terms of things they allowed to have happen because that was gonna happen. What's happening now over the course of time is increased massing means higher parking requirements for the project itself, means lower possible open parking spots for the balance of the city. I, I believe that uh, Councilman Roberts was correct in, in his earlier observations and to just let these things kind of lapse and to sort of move along is concerning to us as well. So I would ask that um, before this goes forward, somehow or other, we can go back and record what was agreed upon on the south property line between us and the original developer or one variation of the contractor or architects to sort of get that in the plan and two, to have somebody revisit what's happening on the public parking thing to just kind of wave your hand and have it disappear. Uh, it, it's it's an important thing given the lack of parking up at that end of the the, the city overall. Thank you for your time. Are there other members of the public who wish to speak? There being none, the applicant has three minutes or five minutes for rebuttal. Do you wish to take that time? Brian, do you have anything you want to do on that? Apologize, I was on mute. Um, as as it relates to the um, uh, easement to the south of the property, I'm not sure um, that I, I I can't speak in, uh, intelligently as to uh, uh, what agreements or 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 discussions were had previous uh, to Hall Group's involvement. Um, what I can state is that uh, we are uh, uh, stewards of, of, of any and all development that we partake in. And so we're good neighbors. We're excited to sit there and, and, and put the project forth. 
Uh, we've spent a considerable amount of money uh, up until this point, uh, uh, moving the project along uh, uh, since March of our ownership. Uh, we've we've not only invested over 40 million in the project, uh, but we've also been able to clear uh, approximately tw over 20 million dollars worth of liens on the project. Uh, and since then, we've also uh, in earnest spent probably another $2 million in just due diligence, uh, additional design, uh, and just general acquisitions cost uh, with the intent that, again, um, uh, we would ultimately commence construction on the model room as stated in the council meeting in April uh, in July with ultimate, uh, uh, ultimately uh, uh, no later than uh, uh, the end of this year to commence construction, albeit like stated earlier, we would – uh, be well in advance of that. So I think in general, uh, uh, I don't, we haven't, we're still within the PD guidelines uh, of our, uh, of the current uh, uh, revisions. We haven't, we're, we're constrained by the fact that uh, the elevators have been purchased or are on site. The stairs have been purchased and are on site. So uh, all of the building heights and setbacks uh, remain the same. And so, uh, as it relates to our project, uh, uh, we're still within the, the overall guidelines of the existing uh, 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 PD ordinance uh, that this project is subject to. I could say one quick thing, too, since I was involved when Brian wasn't the original. Nothing has changed between that corridor between our property and the adjacent property. Design remains the same. Even that first section that's along um, the property that was in question the massing of the building above the podium level and on grade hasn't changed. So everything that was originally approved along that corridor and the, the, the passageway there remains as originally designed. There's been no changes there. Would you uh, please stay present in case the commission has questions? And at this point, I'd like to open this to questions of the applicant by the commission. Are there any? Uh, Commissioner Song. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so uh, you have mentioned that the construction schedule would resume December 2021, or would the construction schedule for this uh, remaining building begin in December 2021, um, and the rest of the project is continuing on? Can you could you clarify that? Yes, we've we've identified areas of work that have to be remediated, as well as uh, areas of work that we know that we could uh, commence uh, construction on. Uh, we do have an active building permit. We're current with all fees that have been and and uh, that are associated with the building permit have been paid to the city. So it's really just we're trying to identify uh, those scopes of work in which we can go ahead and get started as part of the you know as with construction. There's a process of uh, this is a unique acquisition. Um, it's, you know, it's, it, it, it was, it's unique in many ways, uh, acquiring a project that's, uh, that's approximately 50% complete as is a challenge to say the least. And so one, you know, we're trying to identify, uh, where the, where we would start the sequence of construction first, uh, obviously moving from the North to the South, but in doing so we are as, as part of it, we've switched horses in terms of, uh, uh hotel branding. And so, uh, with that, our uh, uh, design directives and design intents that are uh, that will need to and are necessary to be incorporated into the documents uh, for bidding purposes. And so, at least as it relates to the skin and areas in which we know that we can go ahead and get started on, our intent is to get started on that uh, sooner rather than later, knowing that anything we can do now uh, position positions us in a, in a uh, for a, uh, a third quarter of twenty two opening. Other questions? So, for I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I have a few more. Uh, so, Mr. Martinelli, I, um, tell me if I'm correct. Right now, your engineering and design team are working on the plans for retrofit and then this revision. Then That's it's correct. Going to go, it's going to go for plan check, and at the same time, you're probably going to go to bid in order to get a contractor in place. Uh, we actually have engaged a contractor as it speaks, uh, and so we are... 
there are various ways in which we can commence construction sooner rather than later. Uh, but uh, ideally, yes, we would have a, a bid package available uh, as it relates to the new work uh, here at the, uh, by the end of summer. Okay. Um, and you new work uh, meaning building E. Okay. So um, the can you explain uh, this spa services and removed and additional units were incre increased because that was the financial model that would make this project work? That's correct. Okay. And um, does the hotel have any influence to the retail spaces on the ground floor? Uh, we are currently investigating that option, the, that opportunity. So, so we, we are good. Go no, go ahead. So in other words, um, as the landlord or you have the uh, service provider for the hotel uh, for second floor and up, I, I know there's an entry on the ground floor, but the retail on the ground floor would be probably with different um, tenants. You may have five or six or 10 different tenants. Uh, that's correct. And so we are looking at ways right now how to activate the arrival sequence. Uh, and so whether or not that's through uh, a, a third party restaurant, a brand managed restaurant, um, additional retail, uh, such as a spa, we are investigating all those uh, opportunities right now. Okay. And um, Mr. Brandon, uh, as the architect or designer, when you were looking at this uh, four story, uh, composition and downtown specific plan. Did you consider that perhaps the third floor and the fourth floor should step back further from Indian Canyon so that the impact on um, the sidewalk um, with this massiveness would be more sensitive? We're, we're actually, the original design, we actually are set back a decent amount already. And unfortunately, we have some existing building that's in concrete that's already there that really dictates where we have to place our new building. So it kind of limits us as to what we can change because we, with the concrete already there, we're kind of limited. So we did try and pull it back and get some relief and, and open it up as much as we possibly could to minimize the massing. So we, we do know that was a question originally on the project, uh, but this area here, we minimized it. We did a design that hopefully gets a little more open feeling, not as, um, not as many solid walls to help make it uh, more airy feel on that, from that elevation in that corner. Um, and maybe this question is more for staff. So the uh, entitlement ex um, extension was to September 9, 2021. It, does this application now begins a new two-year um, uh, deadline? Well, so the, the way the code reads is that... Um, once construction activities began on the at the site, that does not expire. So, unless if there is a specific ag agreement in place to which I'm not privy of, but once construction uh, activities commence, that no longer uh, that two year um, extension no longer applies. Right, but how about construction within six months? That's that's correct, and 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 according to um, to the applicant. They have uh, renewed the, the permits. I'm yet to confirm that with the building official, but that's, that was the information passed out to. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Commissioner Maruzzi. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm troubled by the elimination of the public parking because as um, this, the neighbor, commercial property owner stated, that area is woefully lacking in parking. So I'd like to understand from the perspective of the applicant why that uh, public parking was removed or not made available to the public. Sorry, I apologize, I'm mute. Uh, as it stands with the previous agreement, uh, it was there was some financial incentive in order to provide uh, that additional public parking, uh, you know, as it stands for us, we've got to provide parking for our retail uh, customers, uh, which uh, the surplus that's noted there 
uh, not only per code, but the surplus will uh, will uh, provide that parking capacity. And so, obviously, there's there's parking related to the hotel and there's parking related to the retail, uh, both code, um, uh, it, you know, and for any of our tenants that we're looking uh, 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 to provide space for there at the ground level retail, we'll have to provide some little parking for. Uh, customers uh, and guests the downtown market so um, so I so we do have that component available what I'm wondering is the previous owner developer also had retail on the ground floor and had taken that into consideration and yet still would have made available parking for the public granted the city would have paid for it but the scene I don't believe that the city is removing or, or reneging on its uh, to pay for that parking so you're saying that the previous agreement the pr previous development uh underestimated the amount of parking that was going to be necessary for both the hotel and the retail it, you, no i don't believe that's the case i mean we we're providing the code required parking as it stands for uh, uh, both retail and the, for the mixed use project. So, um, as it, as it relates to the previous developer, I'm just, I wasn't involved with that. So I'm not sure in terms of, I think they were more financially motivated, uh, as it relates to that. Uh, uh, I, I believe, and I don't recall what the timeline was. So I've, I've just, I can't speak intelligently to the, to the previous agreement, but, but us as an owner and operator, uh, both the hotel and retail space, we get it. We understand we've got to provide uh, parking for for not only our hotel guests, but also for uh, the the public retail space. Right. What was the uh, what were the number of spaces that the previous developer was going to uh, provide for the public? That might be a question for staff. Staff, that's fine. You Madam Chair, I'm going to apologize. I don't have that specific number yeah. because that wasn't something that the planning department was responsible for. Our duty as the planning department is to make sure that the proposed development conforms to the city's parking requirements. Uh, and that's what the planning commission should analyze today. Do the additional rooms uh, conform to the parking that is provided for the project? If the city council chooses to enter into a, an agreement with the property owner about the provision of public spaces, they can do that. But for our discussion here today, what we are to analyze is whether or not the additional spaces or the additional guest rooms require additional spaces and are there adequate parking spaces on site in accordance with our code requirements. And apparently the answer to that is yes. Other questions for the applicant? Um, seeing no questions, the public hearing is closed and the matter is before the commission. Comment? Uh, Commissioner Roberts. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, First of all, um, I think what happened with the parking was the city originally went into, um, oh, forgive me, I'm getting an echo here. The city originally went into that agreement on the parking with the original developer. I think the developer, because that agreement got lost along the way, the developer is now benefiting from that additional parking that was created. And I think that's what allow, it's allowing them or giving them what they need for their additional rooms. That's one issue. I have to say that with this project, I probably struggle with this project more than any project I've ever seen before the commission, maybe with the exception of some of the downtown project of John Westman's. Um, I was on the planning commission when this project originally came before us. In fact, Madam Chair, I think you may have been as well. It's the last item we worked together on as a subcommittee. So 
you may may not you may or may not agree with me that this project um, started its life with architecture only an architect's mother could really love and it hasn't gotten much better. Um, I think what we're faced with now, particularly on the Indian Canyon side, is a is essentially a, a disjointed patchwork of bad design. And I find it very, very difficult to get past that. This project sits at one of the main entry points of our city. And the additions that the new developer has brought in seemingly have no connection to what was already designed and built. I understand them, I understand them not wanting to do that architecture because it wasn't good to begin with, but I'm disappointed that it doesn't have some better connection to what was there. I'm also disappointed that in the redesign, there aren't some elements that give this project more character or more connection to Palm Springs, which it lacked from day one. I know they were handed a mess to deal with. And I guess ultimately it's my best in my best interest to just pass that on to the AAC to deal with. And I know it is our city's goal to get this project done once and for all. Um, it's been an eyesore for too many years and sort of a, of, a, of a disaster for our downtown. Having said that, and if I move away from the architecture, which I will, I will be very interested to see who the actual operator is going to be on this, especially given that we're losing the spa component which is probably the one amenity that would have taken it to a higher end. Now we're dealing with a pretty run of the mill hotel with no real amenities other than a pool and retail below. So the, it would be helpful to know who, who our operator is gonna be and hopefully it will be somebody um, that is a high end operator, which the developer mentioned earlier. Um, I'm looking at the Indian Canyon massing and elevations and it's just a mess. I, I, I wouldn't know where to start to clean this up. Anyway, those are my comments for now. I know they are harsh, but I, I don't really know where else to go with this right now. Commissioner Hirschbein. Well, thank you for leading into that, Commissioner Roberts. Um, I uh, uh, agree that the design is is not what we should come to expect in terms of quality in Palm Springs. And this change just gives us more of the same. It's just repeating what's gone on for the whole length of the building. And at least with the spa and the way the rooms were arranged prior to this, there was a little bit of a punctuation mark at the south end of the Indian elevation. Now we don't even have that. It just kind of dribbles across the whole hundreds of feet of facade of the same thing. And, and, and I don't, you know, whether they want to have a spa or more rooms, I, I don't feel like we can really force them to have a spa, but that, that, the end cap of this building, which is what this represents, needs to have more of a punctuation mark there, not just more of the same. So from a massing point of view, I think it's a big fail. And because of that, I'd be voting against it. They can't, obviously they can't fix the whole thing, right? I mean, it's true, that horse has left the barn, but um, they can make a better attempt at making this portion of it right. And what they're doing is just more of the same. And, and I, I think from a massing point of view, from the architectural point of view, um, and from what, what the public is gonna perceive, it, it's, it's a big fail on my, on my, in my opinion. Other comments? Commissioner Irvin? Um, 
Yeah, I've I've kind of heard a lot of the the and kind of agree with some of the statements that have been um, before us. But I would ask if we if we send it back to the drawing board again, how long will we have to continue to look at that in downtown Palm Springs? I mean, what 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 are we what what do we wait on? Do we do we send it back and then have them um, do send it to the eight to the architect advisory? Um, do we ask them to redo something and come with a better plan? Do we ask them to keep it? What are we doing? I mean, because it seems like we're going to prolong the inevitable. Um, we have to make some sort of a decision sooner or later with that. It it, it can't stay the way it is longer for more and more years. Just my opinion. Commissioner Maruzzi. This is truly a conundrum because the public <clears throat> most likely wants this to be finished no matter what. Uh, and then if it uh, doesn't look right, then they're going to complain that the city didn't, uh, you know, require them to have a better design. You know, I, this is really tough. And according to Flynn, we really have a very limited set of options here. And I need to better understand what those options are. But I, I don't know if we can, on what basis we can deny, and I'd like to know what basis we could deny. Um, but I, I agree. <laughs> I agree with my colleagues. Um, this is a hodgepodge. And, I, you know, I don't know how you fix it. Um, yeah, it's very troubling, and I, I'm, I don't really know how to vote on this. Commissioner Song, do you have comments? Uh, yes. Um, I think to be a, to be um, more detailed, which I, I know you guys would like me to do that, but it's it's odd to have two four story towers in this entire complex and not be. Uh, considering the sort of the urban placement and the setback. And it's interesting that we were just talking about the downtown specific plan and how we would treat the third floor or the fourth floor when it comes to composition to Indian Canyon. So um, if I look at the original design, uh, one of the alternatives of how to move faster is to keep the original design and maybe you convert the fitness center area into more units and still keep the same massing because obviously that was approved before. Uh, but to have the, um, the application be revised and have more units be included, I, I think the massing could be better done and the articulation could be done, better done, which is necessary to the context of our downtown design. What I'm hearing in that is a motion which is madam um, chair the yes. applicant has uh messaged me that he would like to speak he has a request for a continuance i i never got an answer from staff as to what we actually are allowed to do in this case specifically what what are we approving and not approving what are we allowed to do oh commissioner maruzzi you're out of order at this point uh i'm going to let the applicant speak if he's requesting a continuance and then i'm going to take this back before the commission so we can at least hear his request. Yeah, Madam Chair, we uh, this is Brian Marcelli. We'd like to uh, request a continuance on the uh, amendment, please. For on what basis? Uh, we need to continue the uh, the dialogue internal and then we will uh, uh, resubmit. Do you, uh, I'd still like us to give, to finish with our comments. I think I will take a motion to continue, but I wanna go forward with this just a little bit further. Um, and I actually had the floor. Commissioner Song said that with what we had in front of us, uh, it seemed to me like the most, we had two options, one, is to keep the original design, allow the spa to become rooms, 
but keep that articulation because it was better than uh, the art, the substitute or allow the applicant to come back with the substitution. And uh, Flynn, just to comment, can you comment on that? We're looking at a continuance, but I, th I think that's probably what we can come down to. Yes. Um, if the applicant has requested a continuance to take into consideration the comments that have been made by the planning commissioners and come back with revisions, that's certainly something that we can do. This is a public hearing item, so we either need to continue to a date certain or else we will need to, um, uh, to um, come back and re-advertise the item. Um, just to address very briefly Vice Chair Maruzzi's question, the application that you have before you is an amendment to an approved plan development. It requires a recommendation of the Planning Commission to the City Council. You can impose conditions upon that recommendation. As I had suggested earlier uh, at the question relative to sending it back to the AAC, that's something that you can impose as a recommendation to the City Council. If you would like the AAC to review colors, materials, fenestration, et cetera. Um, but again, the request for continuance, either to a date certain or else we will need to re-notice the hearing. I, I'd like to continue, with, continue this to our next meeting. Uh, Mr. I'll second that. Good, Mr. Martinelli, is that long enough for you? It will be. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. Um, are there any comments on it or can we call the roll? Commissioner Hirschbein. Yeah, I just like to address the comment about this extending the timeline for opening. You know, as pointed out, this has been around for 15 or 16 years. If we wait another month to get it right, I think we're doing the community a service. I don't think, and I don't really think it's going to delay it a month because they've got 99 or maybe 85 or 90 percent of the building they could be working on. It's not impacted by this corner of the building. So number one, I don't think it's impacting the timeline. And number two, even if it did, I think it's the, the minimum amount of time it's going to take to resolve this, I think is the right thing to do, given how long it's been on our plate and how important the project is. Before we vote on this, Mr. Martinelli, is two weeks long enough or do you need a month? Uh, two weeks should be sufficient, uh, but can I, it, we, this does impact the overall timeline of the project. Um, well, yeah, but like I said, it's been 15 we're gonna years. Argue, we're not going to argue this point. We've got a motion and a second for continuance uh, to the, our next meeting. And the date on our next meeting is June 9th. June 9th. So we have a motion to continue this until June 9th. We have a second. Can you call the roll, please? The second is Commissioner Roberts. Who was the second? Commissioner Roberts. Okay, got it. Chair yeah. Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Vice Chair Maruzzi? Yes. Commissioner Song? Yes. Commissioner Hirschbein? Yes. Commissioner Urban? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Does anybody need a break before we start the next item? No one, I could use a five minute break for people. Okay.
May 26, 2021 meeting of the Planning Commission is called back to order. Uh, we are at new business item 4B, Dull Architects Inc. on behalf of Wyndham Smith for, my, for a minor architectural approval for the installation of a parking lot gate at a commercial property located at 850 North Palm Canyon Drive. Staff report, please. Yes. Thank you, good evening. Um, as we introduced, this is a minor architecture review application for the installation of a parking lot gate at a commercial property located at 850 North Palm Canyon Drive. I think the volume is too low. Noriko, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? No, your voice is still too low. How about this? This is as loud as I can go. Can you hear me? Can you, Ms. Commissioner Song? You're on mute. Noriko, can you try one more time? Madam Chair, if you'll just give us a couple of minutes. I'm looking forward to when we can be back in chambers <laughs> and all of these issues will be resolved. Hopefully that was going to be my question. When does that happen? Hopefully it'll be after June 15th. It's been a long time. A long time. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you too. Should I email this to you or how does it? Just get to the email. It's on, it's on draft to do. Okay. Kathy, you're beautifully lit, by the way. Oh, thank you. Whatever your light source is, is very flattering. Thank you. I had to move because it wasn't working. So I took advantage of one of the breaks to change the chairs. And the chair is about a hundred pounds, so it took a little while. Flynn, your aunt Noriko is on mute. Thank you. Much better. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Beautifully. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so as introduced, uh, this is a minor architecture review application for the installation of a parking lot gate at 850 North Palm Canyon Drive. Um, you are reviewing this application this evening because a controlled access such as a gate requires a planning commission and review and approval um, after making certain findings. 
Um, so this project site is a commercial property uh, that's located within the up-down district and the property faces North Palm Canyon Drive. Uh, this is just to show the, uh, the primary elevation of the building. And uh, this is the site plan of the commercial property. The property is zone C1 retail business and the general plan designation is NCC, which is a neighborhood community commercial. And this building has been historically been utilized for office use. Uh, lot, size is, lot size is 11,745 square feet, and it's developed with a single building, uh, which floor area is 4,302 square feet. The project site is designed with a tall stack of wall with an opening uh, right now, which allows vehicular access. Uh, the property has a, a carport um, uh, constructed, uh, which is utilized to accommodate a uh, tenant parking. Right now, there are 14 parking spaces on site. The applicant is proposing to install a gate within this stucco opening. Uh, the image on the left is just to show the existing condition, and the right side is the rendering that's submitted by the applicant. Um, the opening of this stucco wall is right now 17.5 feet in width and 14 feet in height. Um, the proposed design consists of uh, fixed upper and side panels and the opening will be reduced to 10 by 10. Uh, based on the provided information, uh, staff finds that there are a few issues with this project. Uh, the first one is inconsistency with the general plan and zoning code requirements. Uh, both general plan and the zoning code require um, controlled access to provide an adequate stacking distances as well as a turnaround area. Um, this project is not proposing a turn, turnaround area. Um, and then also the driveway width and the sites of street parking are both currently non-conforming. Uh, the driveway width that's required for commercial properties at 24 feet, whereas right now the width is 17.5 feet. And um, those street parking is also um, uh, non-conforming. Non and if the applicant were to construct a turnaround area for this project, uh, that will further reduce those street parking spaces. And as well, excuse me, additionally, um, this project, which proposes to reduce the opening, uh, raises a concern for service vehicle access, such as waste um, collection trucks, um, which need access to the trash enclosure in the back of the, excuse me, in the rear portion of the property. Um, for the planning commission to approve the proposed controlled access, the applicant has to uh, establish certain items that are specified in the zoning code. And the zoning code states that uh, the just justification for requesting a controlled access need to be coming from an, to address or need to address an unauthorized parking from adjacent uses or traffic impacts from adjacent use, uses. Um, according to the uh, justification letter that's submitted by the applicant, it appears that the proposed controls access is intended to address property maintenance issue rather than traffic or parking issues. And then also, as I stated earlier, on-site turnaround area is not being proposed. And based on this, um, this information, the staff finds that the project is inconsistent with the general plan and zoning code requirements. Um, no on-site turnaround areas proposed, and according to the engineering division, there is no adequate vehicle stacking distance proposed for this project. And proposed controlled access is intended to address property maintenance issues rather than traffic or parking issues. And the third, the proposed gate may interfere with the street traffic if and when a driver tries to enter the site when the gate is closed. Um, there's not enough backup space and it can affect the traffic on North Palm Canyon Drive. 
in addition to uh, interference with the pedestrian and the wheelchair circulation on the sidewalk. Uh, finally, reducing the dimensions of opening may interfere with the service vehicle access. Um, based on these findings, uh, staff recommend that the Planning Commission denied applicants' request to install the proposed gate and adopt the draft resolution. Um, this concludes the staff presentation and uh, the applicant, the property owner, as well as engineering division staff, uh, they are all available uh, to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. The matter is before the commission for questions of staff. Commissioner Maruzzi. So the, the existing conditions already have a gate there? Um, the existing gate that's shown in the image is actually not permitted. Uh, staff with the building permit records as well as the planning files and was unable to locate or verify such approval. So that's been removed? Um, let me just go back. Um, so this gate right here, it's still there. This picture so, was taken a few days ago. Right. Would they? It would be. Would it be grandfathered uh, if we deny this? No, because the the gate is not permitted. The applicant mentioned that there was once a roll down closure of some sort that they removed. It How looks. How did that it get? looks like at some point there was a, a roll up garage door installed on the interior side of the stucco wall directly above the opening. Um, however, based on the planning files uh, and the documents that are available, again, there was no sign that uh, such an element was approved. By so the that city. was an, most likely an unpermitted uh, yeah. closure as well. Okay, this is a magnet for unpermitted closures, it seems. Um, okay, thank you. Other questions, Commissioner Song? Um, thank you for that report. Um, Rodrigo, do you know if currently the Palm Springs uh, waste disposal actually comes into this driveway to pick up the trash? Um, not at this moment, um, however, I believe the city municipal code requires uh, the prop, every property in the city to have some type of arrangement for waste collection. Um, however, um, and then property owner can confirm this information. It appears that the property is currently unoccupied. So there's a possibility that the property owner requested the termination of service temporary as well. Thank you. And um, has the fire department checked if they would actually come into this driveway? Uh, in case of fire, or would they actually service it from Palm Canyon? According to uh, the fire department, the uh, emergency service vehicle will not be driving onto the property. So everything will be provided from North Palm Canyon Drive. Okay, thank you. I can't see the other commissioners. So if Commissioner Irvin or, or Roberts has a question, if you would speak up. Yeah. Um... This is Commissioner Irvin. Um, how long has the gate um, been up the way it currently is? Can you stop sharing? Oh, I'm sorry. That way she can see everyone else. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I am not aware how long this gate has been installed at the site. Um, property owner may be able to or well, property owner may be a better person to respond to that question. If the property owner is still um, here. I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask that later, but another question I have for staff too as well. Um, how long have you guys known that the gate uh, was there and should not be there? Uh, since this application was submitted. Um, and nothing has been put in place to remove it? No, not yet at this point. Okay, thank you. Is Patrice uh, Windham's here? If you could answer the question.
So the, uh, there is no representative of the applicant who can speak at this point. I see uh, the property owner's name. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes. All right, can you hear me? Yes, uh, we purchased the property in June of 2019. Um, and as previously stated, uh, when we purchased the property, there was an existing uh, roll up, uh, roll down uh, motorized gate that had been presumably installed by the previous owners of the building who had occupied the property for 22 years. Um, the gate, the motor was not working. Um, and so approximately six months ago, um, I had it uh, removed. Um, it was very expensive to fix it and it was not uh, didn't do anything to enhance the building anyway so i removed it and i put up a temporary gate uh quite frankly i presumed that because there had been an existing gate there for 22 years that a gate was permissible um the trash service does not access the property we are obliged to move the trash cans out uh every day or every week on trash a day uh, and then we roll them back in. So to our knowledge, um, no trash, city trash truck has ever accessed the property. Um, the real reason for this is really security. Um, I, quite honestly, you know, um, I have been at the building numerous times over the last year, um, you know, doing various things. Um, I have, uh, you know, I've actually had, you know, Thank you. I feel all these people uh, walk into my building uh, unannounced. Um, I have seen trash. I have seen Thank urine. You. Thank you. We actually just asked you questions. Okay. We then for your public testimony during public testimony. Okay. Yes. So we're so all trying to answer questions right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a question for staff. If we approved it, um with conditions that it only be closed after hours say from 7 a.m to 8 p.m and that they have to make it available for uh, as long as it meets fire code would staff have a problem with this and have we ever allowed this kind of gate in another situation where it had been there before and we allowed it to be grandparented. I think that the question can be better answered by the engineering division. Uh, we have an engineering associate, Rick Min Harris, with us this evening. Um, Thank you. Yeah, good, e good evening, everybody. Um, as we have always looked at commercial projects, including condo projects, um, I cannot recall when we have ever approved a gate that the applicant or what was being proposed could not demonstrate that they had an adequate turnaround area. Um, the, the purpose of the turnaround area with a gate is to prevent somebody from backing out into the right of way if they cannot gain access. Um, and when you're talking about a major thoroughfare, that's something especially that the city engineering department would not be in favor of because you were essentially having somebody pull up to a gate, can't gain access, and they're going to back out into Palm Canyon in reverse um, without an adequate turnaround. That has been our position with all commercial projects, um, except for um, just recently with the cannabis facilities, where it's a matter of um, a different type of security for those projects. And those are usually up on the north end, up on north end of the freeway where they have adequate area to turn around. Um, this has always been our position and planning commissions always um, upheld um, our position on that uh, turnaround. Thank you. Um, is there a motion on this? Commissioner Roberts. Why don't they uh, ask about the turnaround? There's no turnaround needed. Commissioner Roberts, you're muted. I'm, I'm here. So um, I would like to make a motion against staff recommendation and make a motion to approve this gate 
um, for a number of reasons. As long as I've lived in the city, which is over 20 years, there has been some sort of a gate there. And when the building was occupied, that gate was closed at night. They don't really have room to create a turnaround. There is enough room for a car to pull in up over the sidewalk to the gate and be out of traffic. Yes, the risk does exist when the car tries to back out of that uh, driveway. But I think that they make a strong argument for security. Because of the nature of that lot, I can see where they would have a major security issue and a potential homeless and vagrant problem. I believe the applicant when they tell us they have that um, existing problem. I was also looking at um, our uh, code section on this. And the code section says that the Planning Commission um, can, can allow for a controlled access in a situation like this um, when, it is, when the applicant is significantly impacted by unauthorized parking from adjacent uses or traffic impacts. I think that there are adjacent uses that are a problem and potentially parking would be a problem if this was left open because we don't have enough parking at night. And that could potentially create a liability problem for the applicant. I also checked with our city attorney earlier and our section code 81802 allows that if we were to take an action like this, even though it's non-conforming, it doesn't put the city at any new liability for those that might take a risk backing back out in traffic. Ultimately, I think the need outweighs the non-conformance I think the applicant will find out quickly and should research ahead of time whether the height of their new gate will impede trucks and so forth. But I think it's more of the applicant's problem than anyone else, and they should pay attention to that. But my motion is to actually um, approve the request. Uh, I will second it, but will you accept a condition that the gate can only be closed between Seven, uh, be only be closed between 8 p.m. and 7 a.m. So only I those are the operating hours of the business. I mean, or I'm sorry, the closed hours of the business. I think we should let them determine when it should be closed at night simply by saying when the offices are closed, the gate should be closed. I think there has to be a time limit on it. I, I accept your amendment. I'd only ask that we have the applicant suggest the time. Is the applicant present? Can you suggest the time that your business would be closed? Ms. Wyndham Smith, are you there? In the absence of the applicant, um, I would accept uh, you. Hello, 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 hello. Yeah. Yes, I'm here. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, um, we had proposed that the gate uh, remain open until 10 p.m. every night, at which time it would be closed. Until what time of the morning? Uh, Seven o'clock it would be opened again. Madam Chair, I'm okay with that amendment unless you want to over it. That. Commissioner Song has a comment. Um, I don't know if it is an amendment or a consideration, but the gate, when the two gate doors open, uh, the opening is only um, 10 feet. So mm -hmm. if there's two cars going in both directions, you get the idea. So maybe the gate could be uh, all the way to the opening side. So when it's open, it's fully open. The whole entire archway is fully open. And Commissioner oh. Roberts is right that um, in order for a handicap van, which they have a handicap parking stall, it's I think it's 8-3 clear. So you, you're a few inches short. Um, but that, that would be an amendment that 
Uh, and I would like to create this example. Of, yeah, I'm sorry, we are the architect. Uh, first is the gate is open inside. And second is the backup of the inside. The parking lot is 30 foot backup. And handicap parking is nine feet and eight feet is the aisle for van accessible with a handicap uh, sign and the path of travel. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, there it is. That doesn't help us. Mr. Newell, did you have language? Pardon me? We're, yeah. we're, ha we're, we're happy to work with the Planning Commission uh, on the design of the gate uh, to address these issues. Yeah, Madam Chair, uh, so as staff understands the motion, it's based on the, the comments that Commissioner Roberts made relative to um, adjacent property impacts and parking. And so that would be the, the findings that we would modify the resolution that is in your packet to reflect as well as an approval uh, resolution. The conditions being that the applicant indemnify the city, which is a standard condition that we would include for all projects in the event that there, we had some sort of challenge or incident related to this gate being installed. Uh, the condition also is that they, the gate only be closed between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. daily. And then uh, lastly, I believe the last condition that uh, Commissioner Song was commenting or recommended is that the, the width of the gate uh, be reviewed for satisfactory clearance uh, for either ADA or fire uh, safety requirements. Commissioner Roberts, is that language acceptable to you? Yes, absolutely. I would also suggest that uh, applicant work with staff for the gate sizes and so forth, let them work it out with the engineer. Uh, but the hours of 10 being closed from 10 to 7, you uh, fine. It's, it's acceptable to me. Commissioner Hirschbein, you had comments? Well, I was just going to suggest that they leave the opening the same size. I don't know if you guys are agreeable to that or not. I, I don't see any need to kind of close down the opening size. I, I just would work with the applicant. They had, they had a design. It wasn't, um, it was attractive. The question is really working with the city that it's wide enough. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion. We have a second. Commissioner Maruzzi wants to comment on it. I just have one last question for the applicant. Who actually closes this every night at 10 and opens it in the morning? Um, we, we happen to have a property manager who will be responsible for that. So they will come by at 10 p.m. Every, every night and close it? That's their job. Yeah, I, have to, I, have to, I mean, we live in Pasadena. So we live far enough away that we have to have some big okay. eye on the property. And as long as uh, they have an answer, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Can you call the roll, please? Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Chair Wormack? Yes. Vice Chair Maruzzi? Yes. Commissioner Song? Yes. Commissioner Hirschbein? Yes. And Commissioner Urban? No. Uh, the motion passes five to one. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The last item is uh, e EHOF or EHO Canyon View LLC for an approval of a final development plans for Plan Development District um, 381 an 80 unit single family residential subdivision at the southeast corner of East Palm Canyon Drive and Matthew Drive. And before we have the staff report, I just wanted to ask the planning director for our purview on this. So the item that you have before you this evening is a request for approval of a final plan development district for a project that was approved in 2017. As you are aware, under the city's plan development district ordinance, it requires a preliminary approval, which is essentially the entitlement of the project. And then as a second phase, it requires final PDD approval, 
The purpose of the final PDD approval is to confirm that the final development plan is generally consistent with the preliminary development plan. Um, so that is your purview this evening is to make a finding that the proposed final development plan is consistent with the 2017 approval. Thank you. Staff report, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. So um, as stated by the director, this is a final PD approval that has been brought to you. Uh, the preliminary plan development district was approved uh, in 2017 by the city council. So what's before you today is to make a, a finding of a substantial conformance with those preliminary approval. So uh, having said that, let me share my screen. Okay, so again, this is a final development plans approval, which means that uh, the preliminary PD was originally approved. And as I mentioned, that was approved by the city council in 2017 when uh, an MND, a mitigated negative declaration was um, adopted and approved the, uh, the project. Now, these are the, the, uh, the main components of the project. Number one, it is not going to be a gated community as was originally conditioned, and it remains an 80 single family residential lots that has not changed. Also, the site, site plan layout and lots haven't changed. However, there are uh, some changes made to the site plan because of the changes to the drainage plan. That will be discussed uh, further down the, uh, the road in details, both by, uh, by staff and uh, by, the, by the applicant. The house remains um, five plan types with three elevations for each type. And there are no specific changes to the architectural designs. Couple changes that occurred uh, will be discussed as relative to the um, windows on, on the garage doors on the elevation seats of each of the plan types. And also um, a change to the uh, color scheme. When it was approved way back in 2017, there were nine different color schemes. The applicant is proposing to change the color schemes to six types. And as I mentioned, there is an updated uh, drainage design on the project perimeter. So if you recall, one of the issues that the, that the project faced initially was had to do with drainage, whereby there was supposed to be concrete channels on the perimeter and especially in the uh, front section of the project along East Palm Kenya. Those concrete channels will no longer be required because uh, the flood control district, Riverside Flood Control District, is uh, constructing line 41 that will take away the requirement for those concrete channels. And finally, the applicant as required in the mitigation um, requirement have submitted a habitat mitigation and monitoring plan to staff. This is the area view of the site. Uh, this is a site right here. And this is uh, the, um, the site plan. So on this section, this image shows the plan approved during the preliminary uh, stage. And this is the final development plan. And as I mentioned, the changes that occurred happens along uh, Linden and Matthew, and of course, the uh, uh, East Palm Canyon. That will be discussed further down when uh, the landscape site plan is shown. Again, this is a blow up of the, of the site plan. As I mentioned, the lots placement and the overall layout of the uh, project remains the same. The main access will be uh, taken from here. The secondary access is just a gate crash access required by fire. And this is the main access to the development. And this is the typical floor plan layout uh, of the units. All of these are in the exhibits that are uh, given to the commission. I'm just going to make uh, I, I'm not going to inundate you by going through all the, the exhibits, but I will just point out some 
aspects of the um, proposal that you may want to talk about. And this is um, a rendering uh, showing the street uh, perspective and of course the recreation area. Now, this is a, a typical elevations uh, and is very similar to what you saw during the preliminary stage. And at that time, the architecture was actually, was fully uh, developed in details. And so uh, again, these are three types of plan one. All of them, all the plans have three elevations each, like I said, but this is typical of how they all appear. And th this, this elevation also shows the different sides, the left, the, the right, and the side, and then of course the front. The heights and all of all the development standards remains the same, they never change. It's, uh, as far as setbacks, the lot coverage, um, those all remain the same. So I mentioned a change to um, the garage windows. Those all occur on elevation C, and this is this is just a sample of it. So previously, the gate had, I mean, the, the garage doors will have windows uh, uh, on the top and on the on one side of it. However, the applicant is proposing to remove those windows due to uh, financing and availability of materials. But everything else remains the same. So this um, image shows the elevations approved during the preliminary stage. And these are the windows that I was talking about. So if you recall, the, uh, the image I showed you prior on the prior slide had no windows. So this is what happens. This is, these are the windows that have been eliminated. And uh, I talk, also talked about the color scheme. So uh, the original um, color scheme had um, nine different schemes. This is the one that has been um, proposed at this time. It only has six schemes. And this next slide showed nine schemes. This, is, this was what you approved earlier. The applicant, although the colors that are being proposed are still very uh, desert tone, they are the type of colors that you find in the desert, very similar to uh, the same scheme that was approved during the preliminary stage. And here, this is the uh, this is the new um, overall site plan layout. So I talked about changes to the perimeter of the project. However, all the um, amenities such as the recreation area, uh, the, the dog parks, they all remain, none of those amenities has been impacted by this change. However, looking at the perimeter of the project, especially on Linden and Master Drive, as a result of the elimination of uh, concrete channels, the site was able to add five feet to uh, some of the lot, most of the lots that are on this side of the development. So they were able to gain additional five feet in the rear yard open space areas of these, uh, of these two perimeter areas. And along East Palm Canyon Drive, there is now a, uh, a private um, retention basin as opposed to the concrete channel that was previously uh, approved there. That also allowed them to, to um, put more, to grow more um, shading uh, trees along the uh, pedestrian um, connectivity along uh, East Palm Canyon Drive. The applicant is gonna make a presentation to you to speak more about the drainage issues. And this is just a um, typical uh, entry level area, the landscaping around um, surrounding the entry area. And these are typical front yard um, Landscaping very typical, very uh, essentially conforming to those approved during the uh, preliminary stage, and the plant type still very much um, consistent with the drought tolerant um, landscaping uh, that is approved in the in our guidelines. And so, in in making um, in approving or reviewing. Uh, final development plans, there are three findings to be made. Number one, that the final development plan is in substantial conformance 
with the preliminary development plan. Again, I did um, explain how why staff believe that these uh, these uh, final development plans are uh, consistent with the preliminary, with the exception of those two changes that uh, that are stated earlier. Number one, uh, the changes to this to the site plan. Two, uh, the changes to the windows. There are no other changes made to the architectural design of the project other than the elimination of those windows and, of course, uh, the, uh, the reduction of the color scheme from nine to six. There are some, there are minor changes made onto the interior of the floor plan that, that had nothing, that had no bearing whatsoever with the exterior appearance of the architecture. So number two, that the final development plan is in substantial conformance with all associated um, associated entitlements for the development. Now, in, uh, in this regard, we look at the overall uh, site plan itself and all other uh, mitigation measures that were required. Chief amongst them is the, is, uh, the mitigation measure for the Casey Jumbiru um, issue. And as I mentioned, uh, the applicant earlier on acquired a parcel that would be that meets the mitigation requirement for the relocation of KC Jumbiru on that site. And finally, that the, the, the final development plan incorporates all modifications and conditions to the preliminary development plan as approved by the city council. There were nine project specific conditions and I enumerated all of those in your staff report and uh, there are risk responses to them um, one by one. The, the applicant has met each and every one of those. But Madam Chair, um, staff recommendations will be as follows. Based on the questions and concerns that have been raised and uh, consultation with the city's uh, CEQA consultant, our recommendation tonight will be that the planning commission take testimonies and continue the hearing to a date certain of June 9, 2021. This will allow staff to uh, present or to provide to the commission any additional materials or information that uh, may be required or that will uh, give the commission um, uh, enough information uh, to make an informed decision. Also in, cons in our consultation with the CEQA consultant, there will be uh, some um, analysis that will be made based on the questions and concerns that were raised, both by some members of the commission and some members of the, uh, the community and some members of the Oswald, uh, Oswald um, uh, committee, uh, committee, committee. And so because of that, again, staff will be asking the commission to take testimonies tonight and uh, continue the hearing to uh, the meeting of June 9, 2021. And at that time, uh, the city's consultant, uh, CEQA consultant, will be present to elaborate and to respond to some questions that may arise from um, CEQA issues. Uh, that, will con con um, that will conclude my staff report. The applicant is here, as I stated earlier, they will be making a presentation relative to the drainage issues and landscaping issues. Madam Chair, staff will be available to answer any questions that uh, you may have. Thank you. Since the applicant have made that presentation during public testimony when they needed to make that presentation? We've already had public testimony and this isn't a public hearing item. Madam Chair, you are correct, but in our discussions, there was interest on the part of the Planning Commission to understand the changes that have been made to the perimeter of the property. If you would like to hear that presentation from the applicant, you may do so now. Uh, before we hear that presentation from the applicant, I would actually like to take questions from the commission for staff, from staff so that when, when it comes back, you have some sense of the questions people have. Are there questions? Um, Yes, I, I have a question, Madam Chair. I don't know if you can see I me. Can't, I can't see if you raise your hand, so people should just speak up. So, Madam Chair, my, my it's J.R. Roberts. My question to staff is, if we take staff's recommendation and send this back, 
uh, for, for more information and so forth. Is staff prepared to work with the applicant to come up with um, mitigation measures um, to solve threats to endangered species um, like Casey's June beetle and some of the other species that were mentioned earlier tonight by one of our speakers? And, and do they have enough time uh, to bring that back to us uh, the next meeting when this will come? So uh, earlier on in talking to the applicant and then the city's, uh, city's uh, CEQA consultant, yeah, there will be adequate time. And if we are not able at that time to provide all the necessary um, information that uh, all the direction that may be given tonight by the commission, we will uh, make that known at the next meeting. However, chief amongst the, uh, the issues relative to mitigation measures is the habitat mitigation measures and a monitoring program. Staff is in possession of that document and staff is also in possession of a document from the US Fish and, and Wildlife Service. And as I mentioned earlier, way back in 2017, the applicant actually um, acquired a parcel that would be, uh, that as required um, uh, for mitigation measures. So all of those would be my apologies that that was not included in the initial materials that were sent to you uh, late last week, but staff is in possession of all of that. I would also ask that staff look at the churning of the soil and the impacts of the construction and see if those impacts can be reduced, at least in areas where the endangered species might be. And I think one area that was discussed earlier was the area along uh, East Palm Canyon. Um, so if staff will look at those areas as well to see if um, we can reduce uh, those impacts on ecology. We'll do so, sir. Uh, Commissioner Hirschbein. Uh, yeah. Um, first of all, you know, if we get the uh, presentation from the applicant tonight, and then we wait two or four weeks before we hear the full staff report, I think we're gonna lose some of the continuity. So I would propose that we hear the applicant's um, presentation at the same time. And then also, I would also propose uh, that staff and the applicant sit down with representatives of the Oswit Trust to understand what their concerns and possible solutions are and to see if they can work that into their proposal prior to meeting with us. Uh, Chair Walnick, if I may chip in real quick. As a matter of fact, in follow-up to, uh, to the comments from um, co um, uh, Commissioner Hushman, the applicant up until this afternoon uh, has been in constant dialogue with um, uh, Madam um, Jane Garrison. And so the, the yeah, and I, I, I agree with you. It's just, the only difference is that staff has not have not participated in those discussions. But yeah, we would. Well, well, I think it would be illuminating to staff and ourselves to understand what the positions of the parties are based on what staff is telling us. Okay, I will. And, um, I will have a consultation with the director, and then we we'll go from there. And, I, and I'd also like to propose that we delay the presentation from the applicant until we. It, it should be a full full presentation, you know, anew, not that we have a presentation now and then we talk about some other things later. Other comments? I sh uh, Commissioner Marutze. Yeah, I agree with Commissioner Hirschbein, definitely um, postponing the presentation. You know, the, the arguments that one of the uh, members of the public made, I think it was Ms. Garrison, that there have been substantial changes uh, to the project and the perimeter specifically since um, the county was is willing to put in uh, the drainage pipe. So I think that is a major CEQA issue that I would be very concerned about and like to hear uh, the arguments in detail from our CEQA consultant. Other comments, Commissioner Song? Um, I don't know if I'm gonna phrase this right, but. The environmental report that was done in uh, 2017, does that have a, a shelf life um, 
on, on this project. In other words, um, I, I agree with my colleagues. I just want to understand that uh, because the project has been extended and because the entire drainage system, which is a major system to this project, has been completely changed, that um, brings grounds. We do have the opportunity to look at this um, you know, with, with the concerns that are being brought up and also um, now that it is not a channel anymore and, and now it, it's an area of native um, uh, conditions that we do have the purview to look at the, uh, from, from the whole uh, enchilada. <laughs> is, is that the case? So, um, uh, Chair, if, if I can just, may I respond to that, if, Madam Chair? If we can ask the city Mr. attorney, uh, our attorney to speak, okay. I think that question was directed to Mr. Priest. Oh. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the commission. Um, it is possible under the CEQA regulations, and I emphasize possible. I mean, we really just received much of this information in the last 24 hours, and staff is still digesting it. Um, but there is a possibility under the regulations that we would possibly have to do some more CEQA analysis uh, due to this change in the project. Again, we still have to look into that and our consultant will be reviewing this information. We'll be consulting with staff and then we'll be back with the commission uh, with our position as to whether further CEQA analysis is necessary because of this change. It is possible though. Uh, Jim, Mr. Priest, and, and Flynn, because we had an approved landscape plan and every, my understanding is everything has changed because the, the, um, uh, the 41 line goes down the center of the street. It no longer goes along Palm Canyon, that all three sides of the property, the original landscape that was done on them is at least subject to review by us since we wouldn't be doing the original landscape plan. Am I correct in that? A aside from a CEQA issue. Yes, Madam Chair, you're correct. Because it was proposed that they would have drainage channels around the perimeter of the site, we would like you to review the landscape plan, what is proposed to replace those. However, keep in mind that the area that is proposed for development has not changed nor has the vesting tentative track map changed. So what you're looking at is a change in the landscape materials, but rather the area has remained the same. Let me ask just a few more questions. Uh, and this would be, since we're not gonna be dealing with it, but maybe things you can address. Uh, my understanding is the, the dog park has changed because what was presented to us originally had a grass floor and now it has a DG floor. Am I correct in that? I know it's a, it's a small item, but it's a significant item. Yes, and that's certainly something you can condition as a condition of approval. And we could or could not accept the five foot change in the rear yards of the project, given the change in the, dra in the drainage channel. Am I correct? That is correct. Um, and uh, we also have very tiny issues. We could look again at what they're doing with the garage doors, which I'm kind of, we wouldn't, but we have those kinds, but we do have those purviews. The most important one is the sequel one. And if we looked at landscape, do we have the purview of saying not pull everything up, but add to it? Correct, you do. So we do have we do have those purviews when it comes back to us. Um, and I just want to be very clear about that. But the CEQA issues are also important in terms of the protection of the city. 